What's up everybody? Welcome to a new Let's Play series. Today we start with Total War Three Kingdoms that has been released just now and I was eagerly awaiting this game. First and foremost, I'm not a big Total War fan actually. The last Total War that I played was Shogun 2 and I had bad memories about this game like long loading times and kind of too much focus on the battles. And Total War Three Kingdoms um, is supposed to change that quite a lot, so the focus lies on the strategic map more, more diplomacy, more commerce, more relationship between the characters. That is much more interesting to me than playing the battles. So in this let's play, um, this, is pro this is the first Total War in a long time, so I'm going to learn as we speak, I'm going to learn uh, while recording, um, so don't expect uh, a pro here sitting and just rushing through the game. I'm not doing that, okay? I'm trying to understand the mechanics and I'm trying to learn and I'm going to make a lot of mistakes as well and I'm trying to learn from them. That is number one. Number two is um, I'm perhaps, as you know, not a native speaker in Chinese language, so um, I'm going to pronounce the names wrong a lot. So hopefully you excuse me for that. Um, that is not my my native language there. And third, um, the focus in this let's play definitely does not rely on the battle battles. So I'm going to play a few battles here and there, um, especially the open battles or the, the defending battles. That is okay to me, but I don't play the battles in general. So most of them I'm going to skip so we can get on with our empire, you know, and scheming and putting up some cities there and trade routes and diplomatic relationships, everything about that. Okay, that's been a long introduction, and without further ado, we start a new campaign. It is the very first time that I play this game. I have some information. Um, I've informed myself quite a bit before the game release, so I know the characters here a bit. I know we have several coalitions. So those are the easiest ones, probably, because you start in a coalition, kind of, not alone. Um, then you have the governors and th that are a bit alone, and the outlaws, you know, no one likes the outlaws. So, for example, the King of Black Mountain is hard, the Bandit Queen is very hard, so if you're up for a real challenge, play the Bandit Queen, everyone's against you. I'm going with the middle ground here, I don't want it to have it too easy, so Sao Sao would be the easiest option, probably, he's recommended to me now. I'm starting situation is easy, he's the master of schemes, and um, you don't have to focus too much on battle with him as well, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go for the middle ground here, or hard even. Yeah, it seems like that's hard. I'm going for Kong Rong. I just love him. I love his, the look of his face. Like he's always so, what's up everybody here? Um, I like the look of him. He, he always looks very friendly and he's a master scholar. So he puts every, everything that he has into um, wisdom and trade and diplomacy. And his troops are not that strong like the, like the other ones. But he has bony in diplomacy and trade and stuff like that and commerce. And that's the route I want to take, even though it could be hard. And bear in mind, I could lose this game very much. So the first Total War in a long time, and we're playing on hard right away, it seems. Um, but I like this character a lot, so we're going for that. And yeah, let's choose him. Be still to conserve spirit. The bureaucracy of China can only succeed through the support of education. This is what Kong Rong earnestly believes. Yeah, isn't that nice? So I want to focus on wisdom and learning that might be better the people and the economy. So we are here, we're starting here in this little village there it seems, surrounded by enemies. Um, and we are a master scholar and a strategist. So we have different classes in this game as well. And each class has certain strengths. So a strategist, for example, is very strong in battles with archers and stuff like that. So able to severely impair the efficiency of enemy units and generals in the battle. They also provide user formations to nearby friendly units. However, they're extremely fragile. Best grouped with retinues of ranged infantry. Okay, so that's that. Kong Rong, Master Scholar, this is the way we have unique features here, unique um, units as well. So we have the crossbow infantry, they're stronger, armor piercing, defense versus cavalry, um, and we have the thunder of Jian Yan, um, available for character rank 6, so we, we, we go up in a rank, the more successes we have, and he's a skirmish as well, armor piercing. We also have some special buildings here, the academies of culture, Population growth, income from all sources, public order, so we can boost our economy with that quite a bit. That is something other um, characters don't have. 
We also have the education program, so the income from commerce is increased. And we have the loyalty to the hen. So cannot declare as emperor by creating an emperor's seat. Um, and it seems we're loyal to the hen and its emperors for now. Um, but also that's a good thing, I think. So we, we should not be afraid of them. They will not declare war on us or anything like that. And we also have a specialization in our faction. That's the trade monopoly. So we can exert trade monopoly over other factions. And population increases trade influence. So the playstyle focus here lies on trade and population and also on diplomacy, I think. So we are going to do that. Right, without further ado, we also have to choose now between the Romans and the records. So we can choose if we want to have a more character-centric Total War battle experience. Um, no, I don't want that. So we are going for the records here. Generals ride into battle accompanied by a unit of capable bodyguards. Okay, so the, the Romans is more like you can send your battles into the battle against other generals right away, for example, and they just battle itself during the battle, during the fight. While the other troops are fighting each other. Um, and the records is more realistic, so that the characters, your heroes, have their own bodyguards around them, and they can fall in battle as well, much more easily. And we get we choose that. I think it's even a bit harder, but it offers a more tactical approach to the battles. And I'm going for the records there. Options, I don't know if there is anything. Battle realism mode. Battle will not have a visible tactical map. No, we don't want no, we don't want to exaggerate here. We could also go for the the battle difficulties here. So legendary would be the hardest one. Campaign difficulty level, but we're going for normal with everything. Advisor help is going to be yellow. Yeah, Outer save to cloud. Let's do that as well. And battle time limit is Let's say 40 minutes. I don't want to, uh, battles to drag on for too long. And as I said, I'm not focusing on battles in this game. And with that, these are the settings. China must be united. Start the campaign. Embers rise, stark against the night. The tyrant Dong Zhuo wields the flames of destruction. Luo Yang burns. Chaos ignites as the power of the Unix is crushed. In the pyre, the hand falters. A generation's potential shatters. Knowledge dies. Kong Rong feels drawn to action. He knows he must act. Wisdom will save China. But war must first restore it. Okay, so China just... is in turmoil. The great empire of the Han, stretching back ages beyond counting, is being devoured by corruption. The yellow turbans, thousands strong, began raising their banners in rebellion and seizing commanderies across the realm. In response, generals loyal to the emperor rose up and put down the rebellion. And this is the starting position. The Han Your Empire has collapsed. Is set ablaze by Dong Zhuo, my lord. It is barbaric. What loss of life, of culture. His iron grip is unshaken. He heads west with the emperor. A tyrant controls the empire. These are dark tidings. Yet there are still pressing affairs closer to home. Yes, Lord. The yellow turbans persist. Their greatest strength is in your lands. We must rebuild. Schools, learning. It is wisdom that will see us through this crisis. And what of the coalition? Chao Chao pulls their strengths. That wretched snake. He has them fooled, but not me. I shall never trust him, and neither should they. Your wisdom is well known, Kong Rong. If you apply your mind to our current woes, I'm sure all of China will listen. Okay, and here we are. Establish your power, Lord Kong Rong. That is a really cool name. 
Chaos surrounds you. The Yellow Turban Rebellion spreads like a wildfire through your lands. You must snuff them out. You must then act to bring an end to Dong Suo's greed. The hand falters as his grand trees and tears the land apart. Liu Bei, an honorable man, could be a firm ally as you build power against the tyrant. The time is now, my lord. China has a great need of your wisdom. Defend against the Yellow Turbines and be wary of Yuan Shao. War comes for Kong Rong, who reluctantly fights. Okay, despite all our efforts, the hand is collapsing and in its wake you are beset by a resurgence of the Yellow Turban Menace. If you are to restore peace and foster the knowledge of which you are known, these insurgents must be put down by force. So there we have the first rebellions here, the Yellow Turban Rebellion. And our mission is now to defeat them and then we get a taste of victory, 30 military supplies and 5 morale. And this game is very text heavy and I'm not going to read all the text all the time, okay? I'm sorry for that. It's just way too much. It's like two books that you read then. Um, but the most important things, of course, I'm going to read. And sometimes they they repeat themselves then, you know, and then I'm just going to, to read the tiles and stuff like that. And here we are now. Our army. That's us. So we have two generals. That's us and two generals. And each of those generals commands armies themselves. And this is the first battle, Please and the first battle against Wang Rao, yeah, a Yellow again. Turban Rebellion. We're going to, to fight battle. that ourselves. Okay, so we are actually superior here, superior forces. It shouldn't be a big deal. Um, and we start the battle just like that. And the loading screen then starts, which here, is not that long. Move on. Do not dally. And we hear some bantering of our generals. When you're done here, we shall move on. Right, let's continue. That's the battlefield. Our troops are ready and deployed. There's the enemy. Just some rebels there. Three three battalions, something like that. Nothing there, really. Um, and we have kind of like a mold here in the middle. So, like a, a, a dried out river. And this looks like a perfect strategic position for my armies to gather here so when he goes over that he has to go uphill to fight me other than that um i'm also trying to be a bit more strategic so i'm going to take my cavalry and i'm going to get them over here in the deployment phase so we can you know get over there hide in the trees and then flank them from the other side and right into their backs that's the battle let's move our army forward and my riders on the side here along the river into the forest over there so in forest you can hide your army they're invisible then and you can then surprise your enemy with that we are playing on the extreme unit size of course and it looks really stable so far okay so infantry goes forward defending and the archers are right behind that and my generals are in the rear my cavalry is now going towards the trees there and he is going to he's already making the biggest mistake there actually i mean he doesn't have any archers and stuff like that so it seems a bit weak you know my archers start attacking now and i'm going to to put my infantry right up here so he has to go uphill to actually fight me that's going to be bad as well there's my infantry now coming right from behind he's not expecting that while he actually goes for my infantry right away and there the fighting started but he's not got a lot of chance there though Let's take my troops there. Spearmen, they're very strong against um, mounted enemies. While well, my cavalry comes in, but you know, it's not really needed. I mean, he's not strong at all. I'm going to take that cavalry though to this side. And then we can come in from the sides into his infantry right there. There's the cavalry coming in now. 
flooring through them. Oh, beautiful. That was a nice, nice thrust. And the first ones flee already. And this cavalry here is coming right into that infantry from behind. Just like that. Very nice. That put a lot of damage out there. And they're fleeing now. It's only the general now. So we take our two archers there. There's not much we could do anymore now. Let's reform. Let's take one of our generals and fight as well. They're fighting valiantly, but it's a lost cause. That's the first battle. Wasn't that difficult. The enemy made, well, had really had a chance there. And now, they run as well. And it's victory. Claim the victory, decisive victory, and the battle. That's the first battle, more like an introduction to the whole battle system. Took us four minutes. And there he is, defeated. The question now is, what are we doing with him? He survived the battle, so we could take a ransom now, we could seize supplies, and we could recruit our military forces. Um, I have not much idea what military supplies are, so I'm not going with that. An income of 100. Um, I don't know if that means now I get 100 right away, or is the income meant as, the, as this one here? Change this turn. Yeah, I think for now we're going with the, the income because the other ones doesn't seem to be that important. So right, we got some money there and we also have the mission success now, taste of victory. And we get a taste of victory there, military supplies and some morale there. Very nice. The next mission is Kong Rong roots out the Yellow Turban Rebellion and the rebel army is defeated, my lord, but their stronghold yet remains. The county and commandery must know peace. To that end, you must march on the Yellow Turban hideout and liberate it from their insurgent grip. The next goal is to the livestock farm over here. And the reward is support uh, from the people. Some public As order there. Side by side. Your general's bonds will deepen as friends or rivals, affecting their satisfaction in your service. Be watchful of their relationships and their characteristics as they develop. Right, thank you very much. So now we are in the strategic map here where the whole game plays more or less. Um, and we have some things here to do right now. So first of all, we have our capital here, Beihai Town. And here we can build something now. So we have those three fields. So we have an empty field here where we can just place a, a completely new building. And we have here um, the irrigated farms. So there we could build them and get some more population because we have more food then. And we could also upgrade the town itself to a large town that would also increase our uh, defense of this um, town then. Some prestige, 400,000 population. Capacity, some income, 25% income from commerce. Um, so I think I'm going with that for now. We can afford that. And let's build it. So that's the upgrade to our town here. So we still have some money left. I want to have a look at my army. And oh, we cannot recruit anything yet. Very nice. Let's go for. Yeah, let's go for the next town here, the livestock farms right away 
Let's have a look. We have superior forces again. It would be a decisive victory. Um, so let's just delegate this one this time. So they're fighting now. I'm delegating it to one of my generals. And I got the decisive victory as it state, stated. And we have now the chance of occupy town, loot and occupy or second withdraw. Each one of them has advantages and also strong disadvantages because we want to occupy it, of course. And with occupation, we now have this one here under control and also have succeeded in the mission and to have the support from the people. Right, commandery and conquer. By holding control of the entire commandery, we can better ensure that we are creating institutions that educate all the people, not just a few. Wisdom shared is twice as valuable. And we get some bonus experience here, 2100 for Kong Rong. And a new mission now, at home, Kong Rong seeks to help the people. The key to battering your people is by battering their homes. A stronger infrastructure allows for a stronger economy and greater opportunity for your citizens. Develop your island, your land, commercial buildings, agriculture, even military establishments and let the people thrive. So construct or upgrade a building in Beihai town and we are already doing that. So once that's finished, we succeeded at the mission. When you look to the left, we have all the things that are happening in this um, turn here. So we have the mission issued now. We have the missions that I just read, you know, so those are grayed out or transparent. And this one is a new one, for example, because it's still colorful. Commandery secured, Behai. So Behai is now our first finished commandery. And you can build one building in one commandery at one time. So if I take another commandery, I think the trade port over here would be one. Um, we could build buildings there then and here separately, you know. But I can only build one building in this area now. So I'm upgrading my town of Beihai. That means I cannot upgrade the livestock farm for now because cannot build. You can only construct one building at a time per commandery. Okay, so we cannot do that now. Um, we have friends. Yeah, we got friends with Wang Xiu and Seng Yan because they fought um, side by side in the battle. Killed in battle. Oh, Wang, Wang Yar Rao. He got killed in the battle, the leader of the Turban Rebellion. So we cannot get anything out of him. We are now friends with our generals there and instantly regained. We got some items out of the battle. So like a clayfish, a bow, a foreman and a jade horse. And we can get rid of the rest. Okay, some items. What do the items mean? Let's have a look. We do have our generals down here. And if I click right on them now, um, we get the general menu here. So here we have the general Wang Xiu. For example, he's got his skill points, his um, relationships. So we can see who is with whom he's on good terms. And we can see his strengths. For example, expertise is pretty good for him. That means minus 13 construction cost and plus 21 melee, melee evasion. He is loyal, determined and honorable. And there we have his equipment. So followers, we could put a follower on him. That would further increase his expertise. Let's do that. Very nice. An accessory would could increase. I think those are the items that you get that increase the battle traits. So when we choose li like the stone monkey, it would increase I instinct and satisfaction. Instinct is plus two melee damage. Um, he's he's the cavalry leader, so he's he's pretty good with cavalry, as it seems. The righteous hero. He's nineteen. So I hope we are going to keep him for quite a while. But I can't see the class here anywhere. Ah, Commander, there it is. So he's a commander. Excels at inspiring friendly troops, but weaker in melee. Best group with retinues of melee cavalry. Right, he's our cavalry really leader. So everything that increases cavalry kind of is good for that. Cunning is ammunition. So that's more like for rangers. Um, but we're going for the instinct here, I think. Increases that melee damage. That's good for the cavalry. Um, that's one of those items there. Horses would be good then for him once he has that. And for the weapons. 
Yeah, not too much here right now. So here's our commander. The other one is a champion. So champions are good in, yeah, best used to engage enemy generals. Weaker against units. Best group with retinues of spear infantry and glaive infantry. Okay, so we should have more spear units with him. And let's see if we can give him something there. He's pretty good in instinct. That increases the, the melee damage. And authority, satisfaction, unit morale. And cunning, that's for the ranged units. So let's give him the clayfish with authority. Right there. And that's it for now. Nothing else here that we can tell about this guy. And then we got us. Look at that, how happy we are. I mean, we are, we are really, really happy right now. Because we won an island. Or we won a city there. The, the livestock farm. And we could also get something here like accessories. So we are a strategist. And strategist um, able to severely impair the efficiency of enemy units and generals in a the battle. They also provide use of formations to nearby friendly units. However, they're extremely fragile. Best group with retinues of ranged infantry. Good to know. So cunning and authority would be something. You know, plus 50 ammunition for our rangers. Cunning and... Yeah, let's take this one here because it has 8 cunning and even more satisfaction. Increases that. Okay. Very nice. So that's our army. And I think that's it for the turn. For the first turn. Nothing else here that we can do right now. We could have a look at the diplomacy. With, your diplomatic dealings with other warlords will be limited. But as you grow in power, you will be taken more seriously. And more options will become open to you. Right. At the moment, of course, we're a small empire here just in the middle there. And surrounded by enemies, especially the Yellow Turban Rebellion. And nothing else there right now. So we cannot do anything. They're all very hostile towards us. You can see that with the angry faces. Only Dong Suo likes us, but he's too far away. And he's the self-proclaimed tyrant emperor there. That we need to defeat at the end, I think. Okay, so we have expanded and we've learned something about our channels for now. And that's it. Next time, we're going for the trade port up here. Taishan. Stay tuned.